As you recall, in our last episode, we were camped here at Toro Weep, so we headed north back up to Highway 389 to the Two Weep region. Gorgeous drive. And then east, back over towards Fredonia. We went up to uh, Kanab and got some more supplies, water, gas, food, etc. And further east, continued over towards Jacob Lake, where we uh, opted to go east instead of south towards the north rim of the Grand Canyon. I came across the cliff dwellers at Lee's Ferry, but before we uh, end up there, we stopped at the overlook of the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. Gorgeous, beautiful country, and that will be our route, as you can see. It's on our left, which is north of the highway. God willing, we'll be able to make it back into this Vermilion Cliffs uh, National Monument area someday and talk about a great little find in the middle of nowhere. The Cliff Dwellers restaurant is a hole in the wall, but let me tell you, the food is excellent. I highly recommend the fish tacos and the jalapeno cheddar cheeseburger. Excellent. Wash it down with a beer. It don't get no better than this. Campground ain't a bad place to stop. It's operated by the National Park Service. 54 designated sites, no hookups, RV dump station, grills provided, no open fires, quiet time 10 to 6. Modern bathrooms, I gotta say it was a little dirty though. Uh, port uh, potable water available. Launch ramp is two miles away. Gas and supply stores at Model Canyon about five miles away. No reservations and eighteen dollars per site per night. Baja lizards. Howdy. Hello. How are you? I'm admiring your overlanding rig here. <laughs> nice. I like it. Thank you. Yeah, it's our Baja vehicle. Yeah, Baja lizards. You guys go down to Baja a lot? 
pet iguanas from Baja? Or they, oh, they look actually, similar. They're Australian red bearded dragon lizards. What a freaking awesome. Hi they're, guys. They're taking a bath. Ain't you cute? I need a bath myself. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> you photogenic one, huh? <laughs> oh yeah. These yeah, they... Did you name them? Commercials and oh all yeah. Oh, you're kidding. Cool. Because they uh, will hold their position. They're named, uh, this is Troya after the cactus, and this is Akatillo. Akatillo. That's why we have pictures on our uh, stencils on our truck for them. Aha, let me see. We have two others, but they're a bit in bed asleep. On the hot rock. Oh, okay. You guys got a, a lot of gear, don't you? Nah, who needs it? Legato Fuego. Fire lizard. Guardians of trust. If anybody's listening, you can talk to him. Or three fifty man. You customize all this stuff yourself? Yeah, I did all the group work and all the uh, stuff on the tailgate. What was your name? Steve. Steve. Matthew. Pleasure to meet you, Steve. Love your robe. Camouflage. Yeah. Always good. I barely saw you. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you had a desert, then I, I'd probably totally miss you. Yeah. We have a Bronco done in uh, desert uh, camouflage with the ball hall. Cool. And we did this one in green because occasionally we'll get into some arroyos with it more like a green spot once we get off the road. <laughs> yeah, there's a scrub brush. This is actually a combination of uh, artist grade uh, acrylic paint and uh, uh, auto spray paint. And the acrylic helps to seal the spray paint. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, so the UVs and stuff don't... Yeah. It's about ready for another wash, actually. Like the green. You ever wash it? <laughs> Clear acrylic with a little pigment you know. Oh, you got bamboo window frames on here. Yeah, that completes the uh, clampet motif. The clampet motif, I like it. <laughs> what kind of solar panels are you running? Uh, yeah, the big ones are 200 watt, and the other one's 500 watt, and they're uh, German panels distributed by a company called ZAM. They're incredibly efficient. The 200 watt is probably, you know, 12 and 200, you know, what about 16 amp, but um, normally you could cut that in half and you'll never see it. These will produce. and some healthy uh, cereal for breakfast we headed down to Lee's Ferry historic site check that out and I saw this well-built Jeep thought I'd give him some film time kayak on and some river rafting outfits gearing up for their next float down the Colorado River now that would be an adventure because of long deep canyons Lee's Ferry was the best crossing point along 500 miles of the Colorado River in 1873, Mormon church members opened a wagon road from Kanab, Utah, and built a ferry boat here. John D. Lee was the first ferryman and namesake of the site. 
Pioneers sent to settle the Little Colorado River in northern Arizona used the ferry service. Lee's Ferry grew to include a post office and a trading post. For 55 years, a variety of boats transported settlers, missionaries, miners, traders, Indians, and tourists across the river at Lee's Ferry. Boats capsized and people drowned, but the service continued until 1928. Charles H. Spencer unsuccessfully attempted to mine gold from the clay hills behind the Lee's Ferry's fort here. In 1912, he built a paddle wheel steamboat to haul coal from the Warm Creek, 28 miles upstream. This boiler powered the steam engines for gold mining. Unfortunately, the machinery could not extract the gold from the fine clay. In the 1870s, pioneers from Utah began to expand into northern Arizona. Nearly 600 miles of deep canyons along the Colorado stood in their way. In the 1920s, automobiles began using the ferry as a means to cross, but a safer, more reliable way was needed. This bridge site was selected five miles downriver at Marble Canyon, and construction began in June of 1927. The Grand Canyon Bridge was opened to traffic on January 12, 1929. At the time, it was the highest steel arch bridge in the world. In 1934, the name was changed to the Navajo Bridge. The Navajo Bridge served for 66 years. However, as vehicles became larger, it needed to be replaced. The historic bridge was only 18 feet wide and had a 40-ton length. The time had come to replace the historic bridge. A new bridge would be built just downstream. The historic bridge would remain and serve as a pedestrian bridge and provide visitors with breathtaking views of the Colorado River, 467 feet below. And speaking of gorgeous views, just a few miles up the road on 89 is the famous Horseshoe Bend, Grand Canyon, Colorado River. But now it's time to hit the trail again. We headed over to Page and gassed up, got some refreshments, did our thing, got back on the tarmac and headed down the road. We need to get over to uh, the Grand Canyon South Rim area and see if we can uh, check out some more towers like this, the Desert View Tower and the Little Colorado River. The Little Colorado River Gorge. In the Navajo creation myth, this channel worked with the Colorado River to protect changing woman during creative time. It was said that the stream turned red and salty by the blood of changing woman's first menstruation. The Desert View Watchtower was designed by Mary Jane Coulter to resemble an ancient Pueblo people's watchtower. The structure is composed of a circular coarse masonry tower rising from a rubble base. The main space is the Kiva room. The room still contains its original furnishings. The tower rises as an open shaft lined by circular balconies overlooking the central space. It is decorated with old murals by Fred Cabote with other petroglyph style decorations by Fred Greer. South Rim Desert View Campground is full. Tried to get a permit at the Navajo Tribal area back up 64. But the person who knew where the camping area is was, was not there. So we didn't bother getting a permit. Nobody else could tell us anything worth buying a permit. So we gotta drive the South Rim. Head over to, to Sayana 
and go back out to the command forest. Camp out there somewhere. No problem. I'd rather do the other way. The campgrounds suck. We ended up driving a few miles around the uh, tourist attraction points and checking out some of the overviews. Or, and, but uh, we didn't have to drive all the way over to, to Cyan. Uh, we just took a forest service road that uh, cut off the main drag and headed south uh, beyond the park boundaries, which is the Kebab National Forest. And you can camp about anywhere you want out here. As long as you got a uh, campfire permit and uh, use an area that's already been used, uh, you shouldn't have any problems. With all this privacy around, we uh, set up the, uh, the camp shower and got all cleaned up for a sweet night's sleep. Steak and couscous. Ooh, looks hot in there. After a peaceful night's rest, we broke camp and hit the trail back up to Desert View Drive where we stopped at some of the viewpoints. I'm not sure what that viewpoint was. I think this is Moran Point, named after the famous painter Thomas Moran, who came here for the first time in 1873 and helped popularize the canyon, leading eventually to its incorporation as a national monument. So that's a look of where we camped back up to Desert View and headed south and then east over to Flagstaff and we headed south down to Schnebly Hill Road and pick it up right there in Mount the Sedona. Clarksboro Lake. More like fun. The dam broke. Damn it. After a few miles down Schnebly Hill Road, we made it to this cutoff Forest Service Road that is uh, quite rocky. Okay. Turn, turn your tire. This is a little better shot here, but I still can't get her to lay underneath the truck and take one. Talk about blessed and highly favored. We just drove up on this campsite and it's perfect. And yes, the firewood was there when we got here. And there's nobody else here. This is the view from our camp. Looking down on Sedona and the Red Hills. You can see it's a little cloudy out, a little hazy, but it's uh, quite warm, about 85 degrees.
And here comes the snow Driving in the east behind us, the temperatures were getting up near 90 degrees. I had to rig up that tarp to keep the back of the truck cool, but we had the hammocks there in the shade that was a welcome relief. <laughs> 